In this video, I'm going to talk about how to test for exponential relationships. We're also going to be looking at time constant patterns uh, to do with capacitors, capacitor discharge. So we start with a formula for um, how the decay, uh, how the um, charge on the capacitor plate uh, changes with time. So let's define the terms first of all. So Q is the charge that we've got after t seconds. Q naught is what we get, what we've got on the plates to start with. Uh, t is the time in seconds. We've got the resistance and we've got the capacitance. RC, which is the product of resistance and capacitance, is known as the time constant for the circuit. So we're going to look at two tests. Uh, the first test uh, for exponential uh, relationship is known as the constant ratio test. So we start with the formula. What we're going to do is divide by the initial charge we've got here. So we've got um, this is just a fraction of charge that is left after t seconds. And what we've got on here, t is the time. So if t is constant, then all of this is going to be constant. And uh, if we plot um, the graph, let's sketch this down. So we've got charge against time. We start off with q naught, and it will decay down here. So this is the exponential curve. If after time t, we measure how much charge we've got, we find it's going to be q. So if we do q divided by q naught, we'd end up with this proportion remaining. But it doesn't matter where we start. So we could start with a different value of q as our initial one. And then after that same time interval, the amount of charge we've got then, uh, divided by the initial amount, will still be that same fraction. The next test is we can do a log graph, natural log graph. So if we take natural logs of both, um, of both sides of this and then tidy it up, it gets into this form. And if we plot log Q against time, we will have uh, log of Q naught as our intercept. And then what we've got is a straight line, negative gradient. And then we find that the gradient here is minus 1 over RC. So minus 1 over the time constant. And this is one way where we can ascertain the time constant for the circuit. So we've got a couple of patterns we're going to look at here. So just a reminder that RC is known as the time constant. Flux charge gets time. So it goes down like this, starting at Q0. After a certain amount of time, we're going to get half the charge remaining. So half the charge is gone, we're left with half. And this period of time will actually be 0.69 times the time constant. This is known as a halving time. So that's one pattern. Half the charge remaining after 0.6 RC seconds. The next pattern we can look at is the amount of time taken to get down to 0.37 Q, um, times the original charge. That actually comes out, that is the time constant. Is the time taken to get down to 0.37 times the original amount. And we're going to see where both of these relationships come from. So firstly, we've got the 0.37 Q0 remaining after RC seconds. So we're going to start with the original formula. And what we're going to do, we're going to say, okay, the time is RC seconds. So what we're going to do, plug this in here. So for T, we put RC. This fraction here comes out as 1. So this comes out as Q equals Q0 e to the minus 1. If we solve that, that's where we get the number 0.374. Then the next one, we've got half the charge remaining after 0.69 RC seconds. So again, we're going to start from there. We're going to divide across. So we've now got the uh, fraction of the original charge remaining. And that's going to be, uh, this fraction is going to be a half uh, when we've had the halving time. So I'm going to write this down here. This fraction is half when we've had the halving time. What we're going to do is take natural logs both sides and then tidy it up. And we end up with, if we solve all of the sides here, we end up that the halving time is 0.69 RC seconds.